hey guys in this video I'm going to explain what is VPC or virtual private cloud now Amazon provide two types of networks one is called EC2 classic and other is called EC2 VPC now when we say EC2 classic it means a flat network which is shared among various AWS users so whatever we have done so far like creating a new virtual servers using Amazon EC2 and creating load balancers so that was done on a flat network or you can say a shared network now Amazon provides a service called VPC which allows you to have your own private space or own private network in the cloud now that is either going to be totally private or it's going to be partially public or completely public means AWS allows you to create your services like EC2 servers load balancers in a totally private cloud that won't have internet access at all and that is something that you can access using VPNs now the other is it, it provides you two network one with public interface and the other with private interface whatever service that you launch in your public interface will have your internet access means those services will be publicly accessible and the services which you create in your private network that is not going to be accessed by anyone via internet now in this particular course we are going to talk about two types of VPC one is entirely with public interface and the second is with public interface as well as private interface there are two more options which actually needs the VPN technology and the discussion on VPN and to understand VPN first so that is something I'm planning to cover in my next course because those two types are advanced as far as this course is concerned now this is your VPC console and click on this button to get started with VPC now here as I said earlier we have four options VPC with single public subnet and VPC with public and private subnet now VPC with public subnet only will be having internet access entirely and it can access all other Amazon services like S3, RDS, other EC2 instances etc. And VPC with public and private subnets here you can either have your instances or services launched in your public subnet or you can create those services in your private subnet so I'm going to explain the second option which will cover the public subnet as well as the private subnet now here is the summary this is your public subnet and this is your private subnet means whatever you launch in your public subnet if you launch your EC2 instances or create virtual server in your public subnet that will get the IP address from this range and any instance launched in your private subnet will get the IP address from this range so as you can see here each range have 251 IPs available now these IPs are specifically for you no one else on the Amazon network can share these IPs with you so this is where your private space comes into the picture this is the whole concept of your VPC now since we have selector public and private type so it will create one NAT instance for us NAT instance with one elastic IP of type small so the NAT instance is actually responsible for providing the internet access to all the instances which we launch in the public subnet so if you want to change anything you can change it here otherwise 
proceed with creating your VPC. Now it will take a couple of minutes before this process will be completed. Now you can see that your VPC has been created successfully. Let's try to explore some of the features. So you have got one VPC, you have got two subnets, one public, one private, one access control list, one internet gateway which is responsible for providing internet access, two routing tables, so you need to have a little bit of networking knowledge here, one elastic IP which is associated with your internet gateway, one security group and one running instance and that instance is also the one with your NAT interface or you can say your internet gateway. Now we'll try to launch a couple of EC2 instances. The process is very much similar what we have seen when we actually created the EC2 instances in the normal network. Now you have you can see now you can see the same console has been opened. Launch the instance select the AMI and here you have to select your EC2 VPC if you are going to select EC2 classic that is not gonna be part of your VPC here you have to select EC2 VPC and these are the two networks that you have one is public the other is private so let's go with public first and select continue again if you want to change anything you can otherwise click on continue so my first VPC server. So the key pair that you want, the security group that you want here, let's say VPC group, group for VPC. Add a couple of more services. I think that's enough. Con continue. So this is the summary. Still, if you want to change anything, you can. Otherwise, click on launch. Now, this EC2 instance is going to be launched in your VPC, not in your EC2 classic network or the network which has been shared by other AWS users. So, this is specifically for your private network. So, once your server will be launched, you can see a VPC ID has been assigned here so this means this server has been launched under this particular VPC ID now let's go back to elastic IPs and here you can specify a new address and the new address will be used in the VPC so once you get this address try to associate it with the newly launched VPC server and then you can access your newly launched VPC server using this elastic IP and this server will have access to all other public services like Amazon S3, Amazon you can see RDS and rest of the services. So here you can see that elastic IP has been assigned to your server let's try to access it and then provide the key pair name and open so you get the connectivity so here you can see that you have got the connectivity and you have been able to log into your server now let's try to ping any site here and you can see the internet is working on this particular server now that was the case when i launched an ec2 instance in the public subnet let's take one more example and this time i'm going to launch the server in the private subnet again you have to select ec2 vpc and this time select the private subnet second VPC server
Now this server will be launched in the private subnet means it will not have access to other Amazon services as well as it will not have access to internet. Now once done you can see that your second server is running now. It's just initializing the checks and it will take I think a couple of minutes. All right. So we are good to go. So you select your second VPC server which we have created in the private subnet. And here you can see it contains only private DNS. So this is the private IP that has been configured with this particular instance. And if you go back to your VPC console and refresh this thing, you can see you have three instances running. Now let's take a look at your VPC. So I have one VPC defined here. This VPC has one public interface and one private interface. This is the main routing table and this is my default access control list. So again we have two subnets. One is private and the other one is public. So these are the routing tables. So you can see the second routing table has one subnet associated with it and that subnet is the private subnet, this guy here. So any request coming from this subnet will be routed to the internet gateway. So that means with internet gateway that instance or all the instances in that particular network will be able to access the public services. But this routing table here does not have that internet gateway defined. So the request from this particular network is not going to be entertained by the public services, for example, Amazon S3 or RDS. So this is your one internet gateway and the DSCP options. So this is the DSCP server name which is responsible for providing you the private IPs and these are the two elastic IPs which we have used so far and this is your default network access control list so here are a couple of rules that has been defined here and there's one security group or you can say two security groups one is default and the one which is created by us so it is very much similar to what we have seen in Amazon EC2 so the whole idea here is to understand what is VPC. So again VPC gives you space in cloud which is your private space and in that space you can launch your services the way you launch in your flat network or the default network. So in the next course we'll talk about VPNs and at that time I'm really gonna show you the real power and real strength of VPC and how you can take advantage of this and how you can extend your existing local network to the cloud without actually connecting the cloud servers with the public interface but rather you connect with the private interfaces using the VPN. Thanks for watching guys hope you have enjoyed it.